Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Chaos Council podcast, a Star Wars fan podcast with mayhem sprinkled in all throughout. And no, that was not my third try trying to do the intro. I'm one of your hosts, Katie, aka the Gia Cobra, which you can find me with that username on all the socials, including threads now, because that happened today. Um, I'm also here with one of my co-hosts, Mac. It's Mac, aka Crosshairs Lover, on TikTok and Instagram. And uh, Chooch with Perry. I'm still on that. I can't wear my Perry outfit to work and out myself to everyone, okay? That would just completely ruin my secret identity. And speaking of Chooch, uh, who needs to figure out where the cowboy or the uh, beanie of secrets is, <laughs> here's Chooch. <laughs> I. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Lil Chooch Live here on TikTok and Twitch, and I am keeping the Beanie of Secrets under a tough lockdown right now because I'm just getting this weird feeling that something's coming for it. I don't know, man. I don't know what could be coming for it. It's it's just a beanie that we assume carries all the here. secrets of Star Wars. I wasn't here when you had it, so I think well, we should. Well, I can give you out. a quick backstory on it, Mac. You see, I no, found no, no, this no. beanie. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I died. Well, I, I was doing landscaping I, nope, in my backyard, nope, nope, right? Nope, and I nope, found this nope, X nope, carved nope. into the ground. So I was like, okay, this this has got to be something, right? Like some pirate treasure or something. So I dig, 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 dig up the hole. And I find this golden box that it just has a Jedi insignia on the lid of the box. So I open up the box and what do you know? It's this beanie. It's just a perfect immaculate beanie. It looks brand new. How long has this box been here for? I've never seen this X before. I don't know. And there's also a note. This note says from Mr. Star Wars. Now we can only assume who Mr. Star Wars might be. Could be many people. But we, <laughs> he obviously wanted to keep himself on the low. I put on this beanie, and my mind is overflowed with everything that has and will happen in Star Wars ever. And I could only wear it for a good couple seconds before I had to rip it off because it was going to explode my brain with knowledge. So that's the beanie. I didn't secrets. know we were getting lore today. <laughs> wow. If only that was believable, Chooch. That's what happened! What? I don't know what That's you... definitely what happened. Mac, you weren't here. That's what happened. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was gonna say, on, on an exciting note, we're all back together again. We were all separated for two weeks. Mac was busy the first week. I was in Miami at Supercon the next week. But we're all here. <laughs> Chooch was um, never gone because he's the best. Yeah, well. <laughs> we'll find a way. Um, anyway. <laughs> so... We've got some Star Wars news, and then we have a very weird segment, but it's on brand for us, of, um, in Star Wars terms, who's criffing who in Star Wars, which for those who don't know, criffing, and I'm gonna try and keep it PG-13, even though we're allowed to curse, because it's more fun this way, means, um, in the Sims world, woo-hooing, uh, doing the diddly-do, frickety-fracking, um, sharing beds, sharing beds, um, Frick frack, paddle whack, give a dog a bone. You know, just all of that. Placing your um, bed beside your Christmas Minecraft Christmas. girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's what criffing means, if anybody needed a translation. But we're very excited to talk about that. But first off, I know Chooch has some Star Wars news for us. Yes, so the Star Wars news is pretty sparse, but there was not only not rumors, but uh, just a direct link to the, I think it was LinkedIn page from Respawn Entertainment of a job posting for the next Jedi game. So they're obviously in development or at least getting a team together to create the next game. So that not only confirms that there a will be a next one, but that it's coming pretty soon. I mean, four years, that'll probably be typical game development time, but that's very exciting for any Jedi fans. Next, we have Zack Snyder's Star Wars movie. Oh, this is hysterical. Got canceled. It got canned by Disney and he goes, I knew they wouldn't take it. It's it's an R-rated Star Wars movie. They'd never do that. So I'm still going to do it. <laughs> and we're just not going to mention the Empire. I just love that Star Wars is like, no R-rated, but we're going to show a morning after scene in Andor, and you guys are just going to know what's happening because there's a shirtless man. Jones, the new movie, I think that was rated R. And Disney is a part of that a bit, I believe. Which one? I think it's the new Indiana Jones. Isn't it rated R? It's It can't be. Is it? I, I thought I'll right. look it up, but I will put I money. 
on Dial of Destiny. I, I saw that. Uh, but yeah, it's that's Disney. Indiana Jones, is, it's PG-13. Oh, okay. I thought I saw it rated R, because I was going to be like, that's insane that they would go with Indiana Jones, but like, Star Wars? No, we can't take that. That's too I, much. I just love that everybody freaked out when the word shit was used in Andor. Oh my god. And I, it was like, it had been used before, but everybody's like, curse word, curse word. I wish it was saved for, um, god, what's her name at the end? You know, the mother? So she could say, fuck the Empire. Oh. Like, I <laughs> wish it was that instead of shit. Like, I, I, I want, I'd rather have that. Davis, were you hiding the Beanie of Secrets? Yes, I was, actually. Worried? I was, uh, see, the Beanie of Secrets, I felt it calling me, so I, I needed to take it out of this box for a quick little plop on my head. He had to go see. it felt like there was something it needed to tell me. He, he needed to go like see a... if there was uh, any issues with the Zack Snyder cut, you know? He's exactly. Like one of those old superhero uh, cartoons on Cartoon Network. And honestly, <laughs> the Beanie of that. Secrets told me that uh, this movie's going to be trash. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> I, I think it might be a little biased, as is it is programmed by Mr. Star Wars. And That's this is going to be a Star Wars movie, not by Star Wars. So I don't know if we can take that opinion, but it really needed to tell me that for some reason. <laughs> Beanie of Secrets has some opinions, It's a little man. petty, man. It's they're, a little petty. A little <laughs> like, god damn. Oh, god. All right. Well, um, that's all interesting Star Wars news. <laughs> that's, uh, uh, the only news I've got is I'm still having to correct people that Acolyte is most likely coming out. That's fun. Yeah, Thank you. Honestly, you're doing, I'm, you're doing the work. I'm genuinely surprised that Disney's hasn't come out and be like, no, it's still coming out. It almost makes me think they kind of want people to think it isn't so the, like, release hits harder. It could be that. It also could be that it made news, but it didn't make probably, like, it got shut down so quick. Although. Because, I mean, people can't, and the fact that they had released new casting literally the day before that. So they probably just were like, you know what? If you don't realize it, it's on you. We're still coming out with it. True. Makes no difference. Also, let's not forget that that is the most pl publicity that Acolyte has had since it's been announced. That was only good for Disney. Look at all uh, the vi look at all the videos on TikTok of people debunking the Acolyte cancellation and how many views they got. How yes, many videos did you, you see? Check out the video on the Gia Cobra page. Yeah, um, but very well done. How many views did you see on Acolyte videos before that? Did you even see any Acolyte videos before that? Yes, actually. But were they getting millions of views like they were when I that... I don't know. I don't pay it's... attention. If it's on my following yeah. page, I stop looking. Because that's the other thing. When it's something that creeps into your algorithm because it's so prevalent like that was, like, I didn't... I wouldn't have seen that if it wasn't so talked about through friends and things like that. That was a big deal. And even if you believed it or you just wanted to see that it wasn't true, that got a lot of eyes on the show. And that's only good for Disney. Yeah, I had somebody comment on my giveaway post today, which, if you're listening to this, the giveaway is done. Thank you for participating. Yeah. Um, I've been DM'd the word chooch more than I would like. Let's um, go. But, uh, yeah, somebody commented today and was like, oh, I was really excited for Acolyte, but it's canceled. And I'm like, allow me to tag you in a video. And that's the other thing. If they don't come out right and say it's for sure not canceled, that ends the conversation. People are still like, talking about it. So that's going to keep the conversation flow going. If people are still talking about Acolyte, no matter what form it's in, that gets eyes on it. And that's that's why I think they yeah, haven't come out they, right and said it. If they do say, like, yeah, it's still coming out, then those, they'll either uh, direct themselves to bashing some of the actor actors and actresses. Especially since one of that's... them um, is a trans female. And they, I've, I've heard a few opinions on that and being like, bro, this is unacceptable. We need. Well, to that's my and... theory of why this all started to begin yeah. with. Was yeah. they already were pissed at the director for being a woman who had called out George Lucas for misogynistic oh, wait, history, for and then feminist. right, and then a trans actress gets announced, and they were like, oh, but if we say it's canceled, but, then it doesn't exist. But that's it's only kind of been good for that though, because the people that would have been seriously hating on it have just now commented. Well, it's canceled anyway, so who cares? So let them believe that. It's funny because, like, they... Like, who they, cares they if they believe that? that? Now they're no longer they hating that, on anything. The they're no longer... That. Yeah. They, they, they started it, and now it's like, bro, you just... You did the dumbest thing you could do, and you gave the acolyte... You gave Disney that, like, 
popularity. Oh yeah. I was gonna oh, say. Yeah. So it's like I, you, you guys missed the point. Like I was gonna say, I won't name names, but the guy I stitched immediately commented and was like, uh, keep up the good work, enjoy the views you're gonna get off of this. And I'm like, so that's all you're here for. Like, you're not even making this because you believe in something or you think something's true. You're just making it to piss people off, which, yeah, it gets views. Oh, he, I... But do you know how many people hate you now? Like, yeah, it's surprising so the how comments many on that people. post were like, this like, person is trash. Yeah, well, you're just, your video was just to, like, inform people, like, hey, yo, this is, this is fake news. It's, it's still on. Like, people are just, yeah. And uh, it's so, it's so bad. I don't I... get it. I kind of, it always amazes me how many people will post TikToks for the sole purpose of getting hated on to get views. I just, I don't oh, think I could do it. No, they, like, if you, it go, if, you, if you go on their page and stuff, and you like, just scroll at past videos, and, like, you look at how many, like, followers they have compared to their likes and everything, you can see that it's always after they they have, like, they don't get the views they want, or they think fuck. they should have, and then they do those videos, and then they're but like, the Huh, I like these. I'm gonna keep doing these. But the thing I... is, now the algorithms and everything are showing, and also with like brand partnerships, things like that. Like, it's showing that having all those likes and having all those views means nothing. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Because like, I, I if this... you're building a brand on hate, a brand's not gonna necessarily, especially mainly on TikTok. Like some of the other social media platforms, it's different. But on TikTok specifically, a brand's gonna come in immediately, can see your videos. And can go, well, wait a minute, why do I want to sponsor you if you're posting yeah. the absolute bullshit and are yelling at people? See, I, I have this one account that recently popped up on my For You page and I like scrolled through a couple of their videos and it's two people. It's a, a couple, I guess. And they post like the guy will post an extremely misogynistic comment about his girlfriend, but then she'll post the exact same video about him and just replace him with her or he with her like any in that way and they both will just get millions of views his video will get a bunch of women hating and a bunch of men celebrating and then her video will get a bunch of women celebrating and a bunch of men hating and they have just it's unlocked the formula for views it's what? insane but i didn't couples? get it at first and that's what i was gonna say i didn't get it at first because i just saw his video i didn't see hers yet because they're on their own profiles so if you just scroll through his profile he just looks like a shitty guy <laughs> and the same thing with her she just looks like a shitty person if you just scroll through their profile and don't find the other ones it the internet is a weird place man <laughs> it really is I say is we're about to make it weirder, but you know. No, no, we're not. We're we're having fun. We we're... make it weird in a, in I a would hope way. fun way. I in hope a good so. Good and fun way. You would think, maybe. No, no, we do. I I bet we do. I was gonna say, considering our I main segment so. tonight. I mean, we got at well, least it makes, it makes a solid laugh. twenty people that'll watch every podcast, and to those twenty people. You're a real one. <laughs> Speaking of those 20 people, um, we have a Threads page. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Uh, because we actually, like, most of our following actually, did immediately request to follow us. Let's say this. We oh, have no. a TikTok page. We have done yeah. how many? 13 episodes, 14 episodes, and we have never once mentioned our TikTok page. Not once. So, um, <laughs> yes. We have a TikTok. We have an Instagram. And we have a Threads. All three of them. If you see us on something else, um, I mean, we're flattered there's a copycat, but that's not us. Actually, one of my fans once offered to run a clips page for us, and I went, I'm sorry, we already have one. And he went, why the fuck are you promoting it? And I went, oh, right, I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> run the clips page for us. I do that. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't always do it well, but I do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that, fine. I do that. <laughs> like a hit to the just like damn <laughs> dude speaking of vines can we talk about the fact really quick not totally related to star wars recorded a video with one of our past guests zach while i was at supercon and we used the vine of like what do you have a knife no <laughs> and we literally just had a white plastic knife like you know standard yeah. comes in the package of silverware and he showed that both of our videos have gotten under 100 views because TikTok was like, a knife? 
a violent weapon? No, 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 no. Not on this page. Get it out. <laughs> yes, a very violent weapon, too. A plastic knife. <sighs> no, thank you. I'm pretty sure he threw it at somebody at one point. Like, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> threw the hammer at one point it was a good time zach if you're listening hi it was very entertaining um <laughs> but um if that's all the news on to our weird we're getting back our on our incredible bullshit, guys. segment <laughs> yeah so background of this of why we're talking about who's criffing who obviously we know somebody like padme anakin they did the do because a baby Satine was teen and obi-wan we assume yeah. we know um, <laughs> we know, Katie, we know. Side note, because I can't explain instructions all in one thing. Um, That was one of the comments at Supercon from the Clone Wars panel, which, really cool thing, I got to be front row at a Clone Wars panel. Um, Once again, back to Zach. The trick is, get behind the guy dressed as Captain America with the heavy metal shield, and just follow him. Because people move. Um... So we got front row seats, and they were talking about the fact that if they could do anything, they'd have a Satine and Obi-Wan musical. And they wanted a whole musical of their relationship together. My god. Like... Now, mind you, this is the same panel that, like, a drop of water fell from the ceiling within the first 30 seconds, and Matt Lanter, like a freaking dog, like puppy dog, just went, did anybody see that? Did anybody see the water from the ceiling? And that became a thing through the whole panel. Was, did you guys see it that time? No, Matt, but we believe you. What about that time? <laughs> oh, Matt, yeah, I did see it that time. <laughs> so, it was chaotic. But, um, anyway, I back to it. our game. So, obviously, certain people have done it in the Star Wars universe. Because children were made, or it's assumed and implied. You know, there's not a morning after scene in Andor, just for funsies. But, Star Wars adds a lot of sexual tension in a lot of scenes. And I know it's been called out by a lot of people, and you just kind of watch it and you're like, there's no way. There is no way there is this much tension that everyone in the room is reading the same way, and that these two characters did not do it. So, we're going to name some characters that we think might have hooked up. And I will say... Obi-Wan, I feel like, is the basis for a lot of them. <laughs> because Obi-Wan just... Top of the tier. He has a vibe, okay? We lost <laughs> Davis. <laughs> oh, fuck. We, we love it, Did though. we break we you? We love it. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, you know, started. Space Jesus just... He knew what was up. Because, and I know, Davis, if you want to point out the fact about Jedi not having to be celibate... That is a fact. Yes, a lot of people think that Jedi have to be celibate, but no, the rule is they can't have attachments, which means they are 100% okay with one night stands. They just can't fall in love after, you know? You can't call them back. <laughs> That's where Obi-Wan messed like, up. <laughs> I was gonna say, I feel like we're about to make a lot of online, like, shippers on Tumblr and Twitter very happy. Or angry. You do, like, you do not cross the ships. If we don't pick the right people together... We're gonna start a fucking bushfire. Uh, I already know I'm probably gonna start something. <laughs> All right, for, let's just start with Obi Wan. Obviously, like Cody Wan shippers, I got you. I, I think that was a thing. Oh, yeah, Ventress, Ventress for sure. There is so much sex sexual no, tension yeah, that, between that, those two. That, shut up, Chooch. I took that one. <laughs> you cannot tell me before every battle, like or after every battle, it was like, oh, you know, um, I the I way need to go to my ship. Him? The way she um, one time against Mon Savage, that like, that woke him up. Like that was like, whoa. After each battle, they both just kind of like you lose contact with their ships for a little while, and they're not sure why. It's something with the communication systems. They'll get it fixed eventually. The Clone Wars movie, her throwing her skirt at him, and him saying, "My sweet," or right, "My like, darling." It's like. The flirting he was so he was much. Disciple, he's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta. Okay, get okay. I got a weird one. Oh no! But Count Dooku and Mother Talzin, I feel like, have some point hooked up. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Oh my god! I'm just gonna put oh. it out there. 
Because Ooh, also he just one. knows Night Sister magic. Like when Ventress was coming at him, he knew right away this is Night Sister shit. He has some experience. And Mother Talzin had a vengeance and pettiness that was more than just hey, yeah. you you messed with my kid exactly. that I don't really care about that much. Exactly. It feels like something happened there. Okay, I'm just saying that one that one so far is the best I've heard yet of shipping okay. that I've never thought of. But speaking Jesus, of Mother Talzin, how much do you want to bet that Grievous has tried to hook up with every Night Sister he's ever I was interacted with? Literally, just I thinking of Grievous. he never succeeds. The thing is, I was but he tries. Like, because there was obvious tension between those two when she, like, you know, stroked his weird thing, his middle face. I just you feel just like there's Grievous, tension, but nothing ever happens. With his personality, is the type of dude to like walk up to no matter who it is, any girl, and be like, "Hey." Never mind, never mind. It's okay. <laughs> she, like, just gets scared and run away. But he he definitely walked up at one point and was just like, hey, I know something that isn't metal. <laughs> you want to try it? And they just, like, he tried this with every night sister and mother Talzin, and all of them, each time, just went, Okay, wait. No. <laughs> what was his robot's name? Anyone remember? His, his robot that would fix him every time he got home the grievous's layer episode do you remember he had basically it was his only friend oh i forgot about that i imagine yeah, yeah he hooked me up with a new part let me show it to you <laughs> Ooh. honestly one part of me is metal but it doesn't look like it that relationship is so wholesome between grievous and his doctor like i love that he's the only one that can shit talk grievous and he'll just kind of take it <laughs> yep Yep. I wish we had more of them. And then, honestly, Grievous's lair was such a wholesome episode for Grievous. Like, how much he was sad when Gore died. That, like, it made me feel bad for him. When he was, like, calling for Gore, I was like... <laughs> right? You're like, I'm sorry, Metal Man. Sorry. Like, you could tell he did not treat that thing like Jabba treated his Rancor. That was his dog. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... I think one obvious one, if you've ever seen the comic strip, is uh, Ayla and Kit Fisto. Yes, 100%. I felt like I was going to say that, but it's just like... That is not how you breathe into lungs. As a, as a medical practitioner, that is not how you do it. <laughs> That's not it. CPR teaches you the least sexy way to administer air, let me tell you. Yeah. Hey, he's new at it. He was just, you know... Learning, learning the thing. Poor shame, Kit. Poor shame. I, I support my boys. Say, I have one with Kit, which I already talked to you guys, but Kit and Shakti, which I know. See, she I just, is. Not look at his face. I just Wait, can't what is that from, let though? him betray his girl Ayla like that. That just, it feels, okay. I feel like Kit, had, he would have no attachment, but he would be loyal. He would only sleep with that oh, one no, woman. No, no, no. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, like, maybe they did a, like, may, like, no more than five times, but then after that, once he saw Ayla, he's like, I'm going to Ayla, Okay, I'm okay, sorry. I can, I can, I can get behind that theory. The blue girl? Holy but Wait, what is the scene you're talking about with him and Shakti? Okay, I think the scene is from season six when Master Yoda um, has, like, all the Jedi Council, like, put their hands on him to feel through the Force to see what Yoda's seen. And then after that part, Kit Fisto, like, offers his hand up for Shakti and helps her up. And it just, it was just such a cute, wholesome thing. So, it's like, obviously there was, there was a connection there. there was hey, a he's scene. a good guy, okay? He fucking, he wanted <laughs> to help her out. He's a good guy. <laughs> okay. Insane. But with Ayla, I know a common one, and I can see it. Ayla and Bly. Mm. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all are fucking with my shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we had a hardcore shipper here. Okay. Oh, Kit and Ayla fucking for life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt me. I will bring you a shirt that says that. <laughs> <laughs> Little cartoon versions of their head. Like, Kit and Ayla. <laughs> Kit loves Ayla. No, no, no. Oh no God. loves because no attachments. Uh. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. I'm trying to think who else because there's just there's a lot. I mean, I mean another one in the sequels, which I think people just want to happen, and I can see it is Finpo. Yes, like they definitely give that vibe. 
no, oh no, S since the moment they hugged each other when he saw them, like, I just know, like, yep, this is gonna be it, this is gonna be them. I was gonna say, but it's less they just hooked up, it's more, these two have been in a committed relationship together, and, like, they just woke up, like, with an arm slung over the other one's head. Yes. Another, so. another one that's very common is the, um, Eli and Thrawn. Oh, yes, Thronto. And Yes, for me, at first, I was not on board with it, but after seeing a few, I'm like, and then reading the book, I'm like, oh, I actually do, I actually dig with this, like, all right, this is this I just cool. love that the Outer Rim accent is, like, a heavy Southern accent. Yes, yes. I love, um, I love that the Inner Rim accent is, like, the, like, high, stuffy British person accent, and then out at the Outer Rim is basically, like, down South. Yes. Oh, another one oh with Obi-Wan. Okay, actually, oh, never mind. That was dirty. No, that's okay. Too dark for the podcast. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it there. <laughs> Save that for the after show. <laughs> uh, so Obi Wan and Quinlan Voss. Uh, I mean, I can see it. I can, and I can see that Obi Wan is very embarrassed of it, but Quinlan's not at all, and that very like, much was, shows their reaction. Stand. It was literally a one night stand. The two got. Waste for one and of them, I and almost then it feel was like, a bold moment. Yeah, and Obi Wan, like I almost feel like That's he was drinking, and he's almost like somewhat ashamed of himself for that moment because yeah, of was... the way they interact. Like when he's with Quinlan, he's very like defensive and push back, but Quinlan's like, "Hey, man, come here, you know we're boys." It was very much in my mind. It was a uh, Quinlan like a years ago looked at him and just went, "One of these days." It's happening, and Obi Wan kept going. No, nah, it's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. And finally, Obi Wan went, "Yeah, all right, let's do it." And Quinlan, every time he sees him, is like, "Hey, remember when you said you wouldn't? Guess what you did." <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, another one that I know we've talked about that I don't think happened. I mean, maybe Hondo, you know, tried to get with Obi Wan okay. every single time. I was literally thinking that Hondo and Obi Wan was like. Oh my god, I can't even think of, like, a cartoon relationship to put it to, but he was trying every time, and I feel like Obi-Wan may have let him in a couple times. But I think we have our National Geographic moment. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Chooch joked a couple weeks ago that Star Wars should have a Nat Geo. That wasn't a and joke. And bad accents in was... <laughs> It wasn't a joke, it was I a fact. I said should have a Nat Geo. You threw in the bad accents! <laughs> And I'm gonna throw one in again. Of here we see the wild Wee Quay. He's trying to do his mating dance in front of his fellow pirates. Here we see the human male, Obi Wan Kenobi. He's denying the Wee Quay's advances, but the Wee Quay's gonna bring in something called alcohol. <laughs> will Obi Wan's <laughs> will Obi Wan's previous Padawan stop him from consuming the alcohol and consummating this relationship? Only time will tell. I, I feel like Anakin has never once in his life been able to get Obi-Wan to not drink. <laughs> yes. I, I said it before, I think, on here, and I've told you guys it. I love the running idea that, like, you know, as we've just said, Obi-Wan hooks up with all these people. And that everybody in the Republic is, like, an Obi-Wan fangirl. And it's just, like, he's the hottest thing. Like, he's the hottest tater tot to ever tot. And Ahsoka knows this, but Anakin doesn't. Yes. So Obi-Wan during the war is getting, like, fan mail, and he'd walk by, and people would, like, blow him kisses or give him, like, a rose or whatever. And Ahsoka would be like, heck yeah, Grandmaster, you get some. And being, like, you know, the, like, unruly teenager who knows what's up and is trying to be cool with it. And Anakin's just like, Master, I don't understand. Um, Why did that woman just, like, give you a package that just reads like underwear on it I mean, I, well okay. anakin i you know i i met this woman one time and anakin's just like but met her where what do you mean you met her and anakin is just oblivious and i also like to believe that padme as well is completely clueless because neither of them know how to show affection properly so they probably don't know what it looks like so i can see them having private conversations like do you understand what this is like are they threatening him? Anakin, I don't know. Like, I've, I've never seen this before in my life. A woman came up to Obi-Wan today, and she kissed him on the cheek with this bright red lipstick. It looked like blood. I think it was a threat. <laughs> oh my god, Anakin. Might, should you talk to the council? 
<laughs> they go to the Anakin goes to the council and Yoda is like, is a hoe Obi Wan is. <laughs> this we know. <laughs> I just, this is a great headcanon we've come up with. I also love the idea oh my God. that Padme 100% had to give Anakin the sex ed talk. Yes. Yes. Totally agree. Because Padme had a boyfriend who we know she was like intimate oh, with to yes. some degree. Not tell him because Obi-Wan does not want him to become a hoe like him or to see how big of a hoe he is. That and Obi-Wan would 100% be the master as much ass as Obi-Wan got. He'd be the master who'd sit there and be like, when a mommy loves a daddy very much, yes. they have a baby. And since you are a Jedi, you do not have a ba- baby. Yeah. <laughs> She's climbing on my keyboard. I don't want to like mute my mic or anything. Also, yeah, but Obi Wan's like, you're a Jedi, no babies. <laughs> for Obi Wan, and it, it definitely didn't happen, but you could definitely tell just how he looked at her when they first saw her as the daughter. Obi Wan wanted it to happen. <laughs> he was looking like this. Um, He's like checking her out. I'm like Obi Wan's like, oh, I've never been with an astral projected being before. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a check off the box on this one. <laughs> Anakin's unconscious. Obi Wan's, you know, in the corner, like, hey, so no, you come here often? This just, is my planet. So Your point? So Obi Wan just looked at her so confused, and then Obi Wan's like. Obi-Wan just I pulls know, a drink out of thin good. air, leans up on a counter she didn't even know was there, and he's like, so, come here often? <laughs> that That is so true. I've seen the screenshots of that, of just Obi-Wan in the back is like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's, Obi-Wan sees something or someone that he finds hot, and he's like, oh, that oh. one. <laughs> I want that one. Him and Clone Wars movie when he was doing that whole uh, surrender thing, he was flirty. Like he did the whole wink and everything. He's like, <laughs> That's, oh, I don't have specifics, but I bet you Obi Wan when he was undercover as the bounty hunter got around. Oh, you uh... know he did. I want. I bet he was like he looks in the mirror and he goes, "I still got game." And then he just went to a bar to test it. But, like, I don't know why, but it just came to mind, like, him and Cad Bane. At least there's te there's some tension there. I was gonna say, it didn't happen, but Obi-Wan in assassin form was like, oh, I'm gonna do everything I can to try to make this happen. Like, he laid on the moves, and you know it. Because he knew that if he, like, if Cad Bane knew he was Obi-Wan, like, if he looked like Obi-Wan, he's like, no, nah, I would never have it, but I'm, bo I'm a bounty hunter now? Let's try this out. I got this new he look. Was. I feel like he got very close as the bounty hunter, like, very close. Well, like, do you guys know the thing of, at, like, country bars, if a guy gives a woman a cowboy hat, it's like, that is the pair? Like, if you wear his hat, you are his. Like, it's that kind of yep. idea. Obi-Wan 100% in assassin, you know, form, walked up to Cad, took the hat, and just went, as, yeah. So you know what that means, right? And Cad's like, that you have to give me my hat back and you have three seconds or I'll kill you. And Obi Wan's and he's like, just like grabbing his gun on his waist. Yeah, he's grabbing his gun. He's like, you have three seconds to give back. And Obi Wan's I think it means you have to give me a little kiss. Like, <laughs> Obi Wan was ready. Oh my God. I feel like that all happened before the training session. And then that's why Obi Wan felt like he really had to go above and beyond just to be like, yes. "Hey, Cad, look, I'm just as good as you, my guy. We make a good pair." Or maybe some of the moves were getting too familiar, and that's how Cad figured out he wasn't actually an assassin. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did Obi Wan pulled his, you know, come here often, and Cad's like, "Wait a second, I know that line." Okay. I have heard that He's line like, oh before. My goodness, I like this grip. I like him. Whatever. And then he heard it. And he was like. Wait a minute. Obi-Wan, like, leans against the bar and is like, did you know- I'm tr Oh, I can't do his accent well. But it's like, did you know that your eyes are the color of the lovers of Mustafa? It's just still your Nat Geo accent. <laughs> no, my Nat Geo accent's a lot more- My Nat Geo accent goes very much Australian. <laughs> it, it goes a lot wider and a lot louder. <laughs> Wait, what species oh is Cad? God. Do we know that? Uh, yes. It starts with a D. Yeah. 
here we see the wild blue guy rejecting the advances of the human male in another form. He has changed into camouflage in hoping of fooling his potential mate. But the man who's blue with the red eyes sees right through it, realizes it's a repeat line, and walks away. Oh my god. Have Cowboy guys, hat in hand. Have you guys ever seen Cad Bane Species' first appearance in Star Wars? They're in the background. I believe it's in A New Hope in the bar. And they have a regular person's body, but it looks like they just threw on a mascot head. Yep. Because yep. it's huge. It looks like actual Megamind. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and with and for some reason, Battlefront went, that's the version we're going to use. And it caught you me so off guard. That's why Cad's got such a chip on his shoulder. He's the only one with a normal looking head. I would I actually cry Kat, if they made um, that canon. Okay. It's, it's from the Bad Batch. Cad and potentially Fennec. I don't know the age gap. Just because of that. Fennec's I don't know like, what age they are. I feel like Fennec's early to late 30s. Like, I feel like she's in her 30s, right? Um, I'm just right? making sure, because I have no idea, and I don't want to, I know. might just be going off the actress here. Yeah, that's what I was going off of, too. I was going to say, she was still very new to bounty hunting at that point. Yeah, but I was just I'll, thinking I'll, because I'll look it up, I'll like, look it up. Just to, be, just to be safe here. Yeah, before I say anything further, because I don't want to do that. Oh, I do have one while you're looking that up. Ooh. It didn't happen. This oh. is how this is how Obi Wan knew he was gonna be down bad for a clone. Oh, he went through oh, the cloning wow. facility and was like, "Oh, these guys are hot. I'm into this." And then he went and they were like, "We're gonna take you to Django, who it's based on." And Obi Wan kind of like spruced up beforehand. He's like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna meet the the one who started this all. I'm gonna meet a hot bounty hunter. Let's go." And then Boba opens the door and he's like, "Damn it." <laughs> Fennec's got twelve years on Boba. <laughs> Wait, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she's she was twenty in the Bad Batch, and she was oh. forty eight to possibly fifty three. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know Book how old Cad Bane is, so I'm not going to say this as a ship because I think I think she I think either she's twenty or it's after the Bad Batch because I would imagine well, see, that was their first after encounter. The Bad Batch because they're both still bounty hunters and everything. Yeah. So I'll say, like, maybe, we'll say, um, like, the, um... Did they know each other when they met in the Bad Batch? I haven't seen the Bad Batch, but did they no, know each I other think, beforehand? Or was that no, their first meeting? He knows of her. Yeah, he was just like, okay. he's like, why, like, don't steal my score and everything like that. So they'll, That was probably I'll, I'll the... I'll say that, I'll ship it around the original trilogy time. Yeah, I could see that was the first time they met, and maybe they had a couple flings in the mm -hmm. future. But I don't yeah. see it happening right away. I imagine Cad's a person that doesn't, like... He needs to get close no, no, to yeah. somebody I'm first. He seems very bad protective bad. of his life. Like, that was like the start because it's like they both were like battling out great. Like it's hard to beat Cad Bane and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. it's like I just think that was the start of it. I just had a thought. <laughs> you know, Obi Wan tried to get with a Kaminoan. You know it. He looked at them and went, "What that neck?" <laughs> I was gonna say it. Same person, same thought. I was literally going, is this too bad for the podcast? No. And then you fucking said it. I don't know if he succeeded, oh but you God. know he was like, he looked at them and was just like, I don't hate this. You know? I don't know what Obi-Wan was. A, I don't think Obi-Wan had a type. I think Obi-Wan was like, if he found it attractive, them, whoever it was, it was also, that was the new one. We also got to think about the Star Wars universe. Is these aren't weird creatures to them? This is a person they see every day. They've seen this. You know, they could have met this person since they were a child, and they're obviously not going to look weird to them at that point because they've grown up with them their entire life. They probably look at aliens a lot different than we do. So that yes. could just be normal. One thing I was thinking, I was thinking of the just, is just because of um, Attack of the Clones, who Obi Wan goes sees at the diner. Dex. Dex. <laughs> like, just like, the Although, casual, like, do you want to come to Joe and all this? Like, like already knowing what he wants. You know Dex made him breakfast the morning after. Yes. You, oh, you guys sweet. think that Star Wars purposely made Jabba's species, like, uh, asexual in reproduction so that people couldn't ship him with other people? <laughs> 
Probably. That's very, well, especially considering how, like, implied sexual it was. Not even with implied, Leia. it was. Yes. With Leia, and, like... Not even just with Leia, with the, uh, they were, he had a dancing girl with him every time we oh, saw yeah. him. Oh, yeah, the Twi'lek. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. That was it's not a good, the best look on Star Wars. Um, But anyway, yeah, so, I, I think Obi-Wan just... The limit does not exist to what Obi Wan Kenobi finds attractive, and he will flirt with anyone of age that is consensual to his flirting. I mean, I he hits that. him all the time and slices him every time. Maul, 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 maul. Before yeah. I get on this tangent, hi Dave Filoni, it's Katie. Maul TV show, please and thank you. We can see a flashback to an Obi Wan is... Kenobi romance arc. This is the first one that I am going to say I don't see it. So, what I would think, I don't know that it, mm. It just can't okay, line up. so the way I see it, the way I see it, I don't see it happening in person. I see it being, like, a force stream. Yep. Yeah. Like that Kylo they both Ray have. Thing. Yeah, but they both have it. <laughs> mm-hmm. They, no one ever talks, about, like, they have it, they lock it inside. Like, it is discussed with no one. It's basically just Obi Wan being Obi Wan is definitely like a hardcore submissive in that situation. I can He's just at this point on his knees, just like do whatever. I can one hundred percent believe that Obi Wan one day had a dream of an alternate life where him and Maul could have been best friends and like they could have been like, you know, they could have been gone to battle together and possibly other things could have happened. But I just don't see Maul having that. I feel like every single dream of Maul's was just him getting cut in half on repeat. I was like, going to say, on a very sad note, because Maul, for those who don't know, Maul does have a very, like, sad backstory, and that's also why I request a Maul TV show every week. Yes. Is because I would love to see that brought to the screen and that's... how that played into him. Because, like, Maul committed a lot of atrocious acts that have no excuse. You cannot excuse him. He is a villain. However, Maul also had a very tragic background that played into who he is today. On the day he was born, he was sold by right. his mother into slavery where he became a human weapon. It was, it's a dark story that I feel like not a lot of people actually know. Like, nobody, not enough people know about Maul before he was showed up in uh, a fan, uh, The Phantom Menace. And that's a And that's why there. I would love, that's my brief tangent. I, that's why I would love partially to see the Maul TV show is, yeah, I want to see the crime world and what he builds. With Crimson Dawn, but also I'd love to have little flashbacks to how Maul became who he is, how he ended up with Palpatine, how he was sold to the Sith. See, I want a Grievous TV show for about the same reason, because I feel like Grievous has, if not, probably a little less tragic, but almost an equally he tragic backstory the in the way that he fought for his people, his people were everything to him, and then Count Dooku wiped them out and crippled him, blamed it on the Jedi, and used him as a weapon and, t- like, pointed his hatred towards something where he knew that he was actually the thing that caused it and i would just love to see that like everything that happened with grievous how he twisted his mind into the cyborg killer that he was when we saw him also i need Mac, to know i like the thought of tales of the sith but i need full tv shows of these two exactly exactly that like they need their own separate shows their own time to shine but with Grievous, I need to know if it's still like how it was in Legends. The first time, Legends changed Grievous's story twice. The first time he was slowly augmented by Dooku over time until he became what he was. And then the other one is Dooku forced him to crash his ship, blamed it on the Jedi. And that was the incident that forced him into the robotic body that he's in. So I want to know which one's true because they're equally right. kind of fucked up. Okay, this never happened. But I, I think Grievous, leading up to when he met Anakin, thought about it because he thought that this was going to be, like, the hottest, most imposing dude in the world. Because that's the whole thing. Like, it's that tension, that buildup. They never meet. They never see each other because they have to, you know, you have to go seven seasons where they can't meet because of yep. Revenge of the Sith. So, like, 100% by the end of this Grievous sees him and it was just like, oh, well, that's not what I made up in my mind. Like, yeah. And then that's the first thing you say to me, you Jedi scum. That's why he says it. He's like, how dare they create this fantasy in my head that wasn't real. 
Oh, no, I, I, I was described you. differently. <laughs> <laughs> From all the, like, the, what is it, the um, data pads? Mm-hmm. They all told me, God, you were this, that, not this. Another well, and then, you know, had- when Anakin says you're shorter than I thought, ooh, icing on the cake. Oh, no, yeah, that definitely, that definitely hit Grievous in a different kind of way. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, See, Padme and which handmaid is it? Oh, um, oh, my God. Starts is with a, Sabe. Sabe. Okay. Those two. I don't care. They did. I was going to say, it is, like, heavily implied. There is some stuff going on with the handmaidens. There was something Oh. I can definitely see that. Yep. I was gonna say on a very um like on a not they did it, not hook up. We're not on that level. We're talking kitty love, puppy love type thing. Um, Ahsoka and Lux very much you cannot it, tell me they did not have like a brief soulmate. puppy love moment. Like to me, like in those months like that they have been together, it was definitely a platonic soulmate kind of thing. They had a middle school relationship type thing where they were talking yes. but too they were dating but too scared to hold each other's hands. Yes. Oh yeah. That's that's why I had to make all the clarifications. Yeah. It was definitely like the most platonic yes. like lovey sweet type of love. Mm-hmm. It was it was there was no relationship that was real. I will say I was rooting for a little bit for Barris and Ahsoka before I found out the age difference, just because I loved every moment with I them. I didn't know and there was an age season, difference, to be completely honest. I think she's 21. Yeah, she's an adult. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, like, before I found out the age, I was like, oh my god, this would be, like, the cutest couple. And then season five happened, and I found out what age of Barris was, and, like, the universe is against me. <laughs> <laughs> It, it just said, yeah, nope, 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 nope. Obi Wan and um, what's Barris's master's name? Why am I blanking? Luminara. Luminara. Obi Wan and Luminara. I can see that. I can definitely because that's see why that. Luminara was pissed that they were taking. Other than the fact, like she was being held by a giant, you know, bug, but yeah. that's why she was so pissed that they were letting the worm crawl in her nose. I don't okay. know. Honestly, we could have seen Luminara and I, Ventress just from how they were talking to the, each other. It kind of reminds me of Obi Wan. Anybody else gets Ventress. this vibe from Luminara, but Luminara definitely tied up Obi Wan. Like she is definitely crazy. <laughs> she's she's calm and collected, but on the inside, she's a tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was laughing even harder. He was like, "Oh, how the turntables have tabled." <laughs> Trying to think of like other random people. Kiati Mundi was too busy with his four wives. So. Yeah. No, honestly. Kiati Mundi did it. I, I don't know why, but him and Mace Windu. I fully believe that even though <laughs> Kiati Mundi had four wives, he still cheated on them. That Mace is just the head canon Mace of them. Windu. Mace Windu. <laughs> it's the obvious choice. I don't care what anyone says. Like, that, that man, that man gets around. They definitely had like a deal going on with his four wives like yeah i get to marry all four of you i won't sleep with anyone else i promise as he's texting his 16 side hoes on the fucking lower <laughs> levels look, of coruscant so, of it. so keanu money can have the four wives hey mace i will give you a little something something <laughs> you pass this yo man you gotta you gotta talk to yoda for me you're his boy <laughs> like you have to please like Please, I'll do whatever. Just, I'll okay. do it. Please. Look, man, I already know there was an exception, but like, you gotta get me another one. I'm starting. <laughs> I'm starting a TikTok series that's gonna be Jedi behind council doors, and it's gonna be Caddy talking to Mace Windu for the first one. Hey, man, listen, I need four wives. <laughs> like, Please, not man. one, not two. Fuck you need four, four, no, no, man. Having, it's a full negotiation of like, I need, I need ten wives. I'll give you two. No, six. I will give you three, four, fine, four, shake on it. If this doesn't go viral, I quit TikTok because this is a genius your- idea. <laughs> You're welcome. That's basically it. I'll give you four if you let me suck on your... <laughs> oh my, okay, wait, this is going to be my Caddy Mundi too. Okay, you can take that idea, Chooch. I don't... <laughs> I realized I probably shouldn't use a white beanie. <laughs> there you go. There's your Kiati Moon. This is oh, fuck. that's gonna be my Kiati Moon. I think it's gonna be fucking perfect. Please tag me whenever you do this. And then oh, I'm gonna not gonna do absolutely fucking anything to be Mace Windu. 
Nope. Maybe Absolutely I'll hold not. a purple lightsaber. <laughs> that's about all that's acceptable. Thing. Get the bald thing. Oh, I need a bald cap. <laughs> no, a bald filter. Oh, I uh, forgot yeah. those existed! <laughs> I had a much easier solution here. <laughs> you don't need a bald cap. It'll look much dorkier, oh but just, you know, condom. <laughs> Get a get a white balloon. <laughs> Imagine if it goes viral. Every comment is just, "Is that a fucking condom on your head?" Just watch. She's in What's the middle. A professional podcast. <laughs> I'm fucking She's titling this podcast the most brand friendly podcast yet. <laughs> Dude, just imagine you put it on and the little thing goes. It's yeah, exactly. It's just gonna go like boing. <laughs> oh, what is that? <laughs> And then for Kiati Mundi, I'll just get Anika to like blow it up so it sticks up on my head. <laughs> yes, do it. John said we were the Chaos Council for a reason. Okay. This has got to be the most chaotic episode we've ever had. We Holy say shit. that every time too. I'm it trying just to keeps think. Getting worse. I'm trying to think of any other like random ones. <laughs> We just go full out weird because we can go full out weird. No, I'm kidding. I was um, gonna say, what? You got a full out weird? Oh no, Aura Singh and Hondo. Weren't they a couple? No. They weren't a couple, but that kiss obviously ensued that there was something. I was gonna say, I think they were technically a couple. Okay, in this the is, loosest sense. On a completely different note, Aura Singh 100% thought of herself as Boba's mom. She 100% like I don't I don't think Boba ever for one th second thought of her as a mom, but in her mind she was Boba's mom. Or was like this is how you mother, yeah. Yes, sure. exactly. And she thought she was doing fucking unreal. Oh yeah. Um, trying to think who else oh, interacts five. with who. We know Fives and Obi Wan are tied for who slept the most around. My boy Fives is <laughs> fucking around. Yeah, I didn't know oh, that. Dude. No, oh, it's a huge. Ko three, it's everywhere. He he. It is a. Do anything. <gasps> it is a huge head cannon that fives hooks up with everybody, and Echo just kind of stands there like fives. No fives. Just no like no think... fives. We have places to be fives, and fives is like screw that. Fives, fives. I told fives? you. The bar no, tonight in the barracks. Not tonight in the barracks. Do you think fives is the one that the clone that slept with Ventress? Because the clone definitely slept with Ventress. Oh yeah. Oh, that was one we haven't talked right? about. <laughs> no. It it has to be him. Like, Fives wouldn't have graduated yet. Oh, you're right. Oh, that's true. Because it has to be before the kiss of death. And there, I'm guessing there oh. was a little bit of a time period in between those So parts. we all talked about earlier off podcast that we think that there was some relationship or hookup between Ventress and a clone before the kiss of death happened. Because, yes, it was violent and very, like, Sith-like. But and like absolutely savage, but also there was something a little too savage about it. Right. It Flick? just it like because that was for her. Wait, who? That was not oh. Slick. What about Slick? Uh because I mean, in a way to convince him, you know, I get into his mind, play with his mind to get him to do what she wants. What if it was Rex? <laughs> no. <laughs> what if because think about it anakin no. is in the meeting room complaining about can't find ventress it's like rex get in here rex is throwing on his armor as he's running out of bed with ventress she's jumping out the window not my angel boy could never cody and obi-wan's looking he's like shit he can't play me i would see that cody probably had a threesome with obi-wan and ventress that yep. definitely happened that, yeah. oh my god why didn't we think about that Obi-Wan and <laughs> Cody have definitely Eiffel Towered more people in Star Wars than any other two characters. We can just put that out there right now. Star Wars and brands. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't. Do you guys have any other last uh, topics you guys want to say? Because I got to. I'm trying to think uh, of something to bring it after. back from there, man. I think that's a fantastic note to end on. Uh, I can't okay, so we need a Spotify question. Which who in Star Wars do you think is hooked up? What what that's the question. What random coupling do you think has happened? Keep it legal, please. We will not post or talk about any that aren't. Um, but yeah, let us know. That's gonna be the question and I'm trying to think of what our poll could be. And uh, if you guys do 
drop them in the comments below if we see any that we really like we will uh mention them in the next podcast give you guys a little uh shout out if whoever left it down there and then for the poll i'm thinking we gotta go with okay wait who did you guys say was the other one other than obi-wan that you think has slept with the most people do you think there's anyone that can compete with him maybe hondo i don't i don't think fives did as I th- many i think <laughs> maybe hondo that we man could had a lot that. of drunk nights <laughs> Or we could do which pairing do you think is the best one out of, like, Obi-Wan's suitors? Ooh, but we, okay, what are the two best ones out of Obi-Wan's suitors, then? We of might the be allowed team. to do more than two. Oh, it's probably Ventress? four. I would imagine it's four, Obi-Wan right, for Ventress? a poll. So, Ventress, Cody. And who Cody do we want to do and two? Obi-Wan. Satine and Obi-Wan. And then... Mm. Oh... What was the say? sister oh, or the Bane daughter? Cad Bane, Obi Wan. Okay, we could do. I think because the teen's too obvious. Ah, that's true. So I think our four options there are Cody, Ventress, um, Dex, because that's just so far out of left field. Yes, yes. But you know, Dex was good and made him breakfast. And oh, Cam Luminara. Cam- oh. Luminara, yes. I don't think he got with the Camino, and I think he tried. Oh, that's true. Okay, and they were so just those like, are going to be talking about we clone. We don't do that disgusting nonsense. There is no way they have sex anymore. Have you seen how white their no. walls are? Them shits is too clean. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely doesn't happen. Um, so yeah, those are going to be the four choices of which coupling is your favorite. And it's so which because I'll probably clip this part. Um, <laughs> so that's going to be our poll question. Which person do you is your favorite that Obi Wan is hooked up with out of the four? Cody, Luminara, Dex from Dex's Diner, and Ventress, because we think he's hooked up with all four of them at some point. Absolutely. All right. All right. Take us out. Yeah. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you guys are watching on Spotify, I mean, we just went over it, but make sure you answer the poll down below and you uh, answer the little Q&A section down there. Make sure you rate us five stars and send the podcast to all your friends. And if you guys happen to be watching on YouTube, make sure you comment down below, like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, all of that good stuff. It really helps out the podcast. And uh, thank you guys all so much for watching till the very end. It really means a lot to us. Have a good one.